So that was an awesome experience. Um, you know, to be away from uh, the rest of the team, sometimes I don't like, and, and you know, you wish you had that opportunity to be with a bunch of guys, but I wasn't kidding when I said it's a great depiction of our program. We got a first year guy, we got a third year guy, we got a fifth year guy. And that kind of sums up our team, right? We got a first year coach, we got a lot of first year coaches, we got a lot of guys that, you know, have been around for a while and seniors and things like that. It's all going to be about how do we handle and mesh and come together. You talked with what happened at Northwestern with the Hayes and stuff. There's, I think there's more scrutiny on what goes on at camp and that. The only thing we've ever seen over the years is bad haircut day for you generally by the line that we're, that we check your board or just a mohawk or whatever. And the kids seem to have fun with that. Do you, is that something you're aware of? Do yeah. you allow it or have you talked to them about that? Yes. And, and I, I tried to, you know, we learned and studied the things that have happened and I emphasized and we talked about, look, there's no place for these kinds of things within. I mean, I don't know how things can go, but like, we challenge each other every single day. And it's pretty easy to figure out the guys that are all in and not. We put film on, on you know, in the team move, and we show things, and that's only to make sure we set the standard for what it is we want. We don't need to find out how tough guys are. Just, it's a great reminder to us that things grow and things can get out of hand if you allow it and you don't recognize it. So. We've been a part of that before. My um, son got his hair cut, and, and I, that's when I kind of recognized it. Okay, I don't, this is fun, and things like that, but sometimes it has a, too much of a negative effect. So, things that we've addressed and things that uh, we will get better because of. At camp, will you have the individual camera and individual players again? Does it get different? How the guys like that in school? Well, when they looked good on it, they liked it a lot. <laughs> but I think it creates some anxiety in how you do anything. And that's what you're doing. You've talked about walking into a good culture. That's not usually how it goes. When a coach takes a job, it's usually building culture is like number one to do list. It, does it that is. easier is a bad word, but does it make it a little bit I easier think to it, not well, have to do that? There, there's twofold. I think that there's there's easy parts of it, then there's hard parts of it. When you have a good culture, when you have things that are you know been entrenched for a long time, whether you can call it the offense, like sometimes it's hard to change, even if things weren't as successful because you know kids believed in it things like that. So I think twofold, I think it's really critical as to how you change those things and you know you don't ever you know put down on things that have been successful in the past. So I think it's twofold. I think by having higher end kids that are very have a high end of maturity and you know intelligence, I, it, it gives you a greater opportunity for them to recognize that change is inevitable. Growth is a thing that's optional. And that's why I said it's it's been a challenge in both ways. But it's been one that I think that has really helped us all grow. Are there heading into? I know it's still a few days away, but are there any players that you're foreseeing gonna be limited or miss time at the beginning of camp with any injuries? Uh, I don't think so right now. I, mean, I think the guys that have been a little bit longer term, there's there's some guys as we go in that we'll have to see. I think that we said they might be limited and, and really monitoring their volume of things. But I, I think and I hope that we're going to be pretty, you know, pretty clean as we get rolling. You know, the Chris Brookses of the world that you know had a broken leg and, and, and spring ball that you hope um, you hope are going to be, you know, whether it's the first week or so of camp, we'll start to get a lot more action. What about a guy like Aaron? Can we ask him because he's had yeah. such a long I don't, I don't, right now, Aaron is not one that's probably going to gonna make it right now. I mean, he's going to be there. He's going to continue to rehab. We kind of put him on and say, let's don't, don't rush things. Let's, this guy's got one opportunity on, on some things that, Let's, uh, let's see how it goes. So I, I would imagine he's going to be a longer, longer term guy that we're not going to push to try to get him there. I think you'll have Jake Renfro. What's that? Jake Renfro. Hopefully Jake will be good to go. It's another one of those guys just monitoring volume coming off of a little surgery. Looks like there's a possibility that Wisconsin is going to have a couple of Saturday night games. Hasn't been announced officially yet, but I guess I just want to get your thoughts on the prospect of playing a night game at Camp Randall. And I don't know if you were on the, ever on the opposing oh, side yeah. of that. Oh yeah, I've been on a couple of opposing sides of night games in Camp Randall, and it's a crazy electric atmosphere. Um, our kids love night games. Obviously, as a coach, you get into that point where you don't love night games sometimes. You love them at home, but on the road with the travel and things, but it's a part of our game, and if it's good for our kids and they love it, then I'm all for it. You know, it's, I'm not one of those ones that's going to push back on a, a night game late in the season. Like, look, man, this, this is about our kids and what's best for them tell you what is going to be best for our program. So it's exciting. I don't follow it. I don't know a whole lot about it. It doesn't change the way in which we prepare. Um, but it does you know, change some things, obviously, for the, for the actual game day. You guys went out and added a cornerback this 
this off season or after spring ball and then a punter as well. Just your impressions of Nizir and Atticus. They're going to give us some opportunities and they're going to create, Nizir is going to create great competition for us, create that depth that we talk about. Being able to play defensively in particular, play 22. And then Atticus is a guy that we got to see what he's got. I mean, he's going to be thrown right into the fire with an opportunity to go compete to, to be the starter on day one. And he's a little bit older and mature guy. I've had that experience with three or so the last that last few years, even back in Columbus, like we had one from the same school. And these guys are mature beyond their years, but there's still some things about the game that they uh, they don't quite understand yet. So it'll be interesting. You talk about the things that kind of exceed your expectations. The outside perception of Wisconsin has always kind of been like, maybe boring is the word that gets thrown around, but do you think that's changed a little bit, but just the way you guys have recruited and done some other things? I hope, I think the biggest thing for me that, that I want to continue to push the, the, the outside perception is like what an amazing school is. Like the level of what school is and the national recognition that I believe is the best. Like within the state and the communities and close, I mean, everybody realizes how phenomenal the school is. But sometimes when you're recruiting some of these high, high, high end academic kids, this school is phenomenal. I mean, the, the opportunities in the long run are going to be amazing. So I think that all kind of goes hand in hand, whether it's recruiting, whether it's just the connection national brand of, of the school itself. Um, I hope that that's what this Big Ten and this evolution of what it is that we're doing, we want to continue to push that for us in particular as well. Coach, you just walked up, I'm sorry. The clock change rules that are going to go into effect this year, cutting down the plays, well, the same rules, but back in 2006, they had some rule changes that cut plays down about like seven a game. Coaches hated it. It changed philosophies. Mac Brown was very much against the percent of the rules. Having said all that, how much have you looked into the rule changes? How's it changed things for you? I don't think it's going to change a whole lot for us. I know that, you know, by nature, offensive guys in nature want more plays. Defensive guys in nature were perfectly fine with having less plays. Um, but I, 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 don't, I don't know that it makes it. I don't, sometimes I wonder why we tamper with our game a lot. I know it's trying to shorten in certain things. There's a lot of other ways I'd oppose just messing with the game in particular. Like, you go and put it in, right? A little split screen like they do in golf right there for the commercial. Let's just make the commercial two and a half minutes and split screen the thing for the rest and we can get this game continue to go and not mess with some of those things. But whatever the rules are, I think I've heard a coach say, tell me what they are when we start camp. We'll adjust and adapt because that's the name of it. Thanks, guys.